Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace and blessings of Allah be upon you all. And welcome to another year, another fresh episode of Ramadan TV. A TV show about getting to know our community and perfecting our Iman. Once again, we are here at our beautiful garden masjid. The masjid that we always love coming to, where there's beautiful people and there's a beautiful gathering and there's lots of fun things happening here. And we are here once again, another year, to be with this beautiful gathering and to enjoy this uh, tarawih prayer. And at the same time, maybe we can learn some things. So inshallah, without any further delays, we're going to start our competition today. And if you get it right, you'll get a Zamzam water, the holy water of Zamzam from Mecca, inshallah. So are we ready? Yes. Good. Now for the sisters, it's going to be hard. But for the sisters, if there is a kid that can tell us there is an answer for the sisters, can come out and tell us. Otherwise, inshallah, we keep it here. Uh, the first question. The first question I'm going to ask is going to be, inshallah, an easy one. Uh, when the Prophet ﷺ was in Medina and then the Muhajireen came, what was the first thing that the Prophet ﷺ ordered to be done between the Muhajireen and the Ansar? And the Muhajireen are the ones that came from Mecca and the Ansar are the people of the Medina. What did he order? Yes? He basically made brothers each other. He picked one Muhajir. Yep. He basically picked one from Ansar and one from Mahajir and they make basically brother each other. So they were akhuwat. Very good. That's excellent. So that was the thing that the Prophet Sallallahu ordered to do. He brotherhood the people from Medina and from Mecca. And this is what our religion is. And that's why when we see one another, we greet of Salam of Islam, uh, Salam Alaikum, and we call each other brothers. Because in Islam, we're all brothers. And that's the first thing that the Prophet Sallallahu did is put them together. It got to a point where the people of Ansar, people of Medina, they were giving half of their wealth to the people of Muhajirin, the ones that came. And that's what the real brotherhood is. So Alhamdulillah for the blessing of Islam. We are in month of Ramadan. So we need to give you a Zamzam, don't we? Yeah. I need the help of a Zamzam. All right, Sheikh Na'afun. Thank you very much. All right. So during Ramadan, which we the month that we're in, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about this particular month in the Quran. And it said, in particularly for this month, the main purpose of Ramadan is what? Taqwa. Ahsant is to gain taqwa. It's to gain taqwa. And taqwa, what is taqwa? Take explain for you that may not know what taqwa is. It's uh, fearful of Allah and fear of, uh, like, um, acting as you see Allah. Ahsant. 
is being fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and acting as if you are seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you have to be aware of the things that you do right and forbidding or staying away from the things that are wrong. So Jazakallah khair. Now we can go to a bit of a harder one. Yusuf alayhi salam, Prophet Joseph, he was sentenced. He was sentenced. Who can tell me? We do the sentence first and then we can go for other further detail. Who can tell me how much was his sentence? How long was his sentence? This is a hard one. No. No. How long was his sentence? And it's mentioned in the Quran. But how long was it? Like it's... It's, it's, I will give you a clue. It doesn't say the year, but it says what the sentence was. It doesn't give you the year, but it tells you what the sentence was. No. But in the Quran, it doesn't say. What was his sentence? When he got sentenced, you can imagine, he got sentenced. What was his sentence? What was his sentence? Do you want me to help you guys? Can you give us more clues? I've given you enough clues. <laughs> his sentence was. Allah. His sentence was. Do you know how long it was? His sentence was. Hatta Haim. Hatta Haim means. Until another. No, no limit to it. So it was that bad. It was Hatta Hain. They called it Hatta Hain. It says Hatta Hain. There is no time. There's basically, it's like a, until for what? It's not forever, but it's, it's it's almost like life sentence. Because if you say life sentence, they know there's life sentence. But it's Hatta Hain. It's like that's it. It's giving him a sentence without a time period, which is a long period, but without a time period. Now, what was the dream that Yusuf, since we're talking about Yusuf, Alayhi salam, Joseph, Prophet Joseph. What was the dream that he had? And how did that dream become true? Okay, some, yes? Um, that what his 11 brothers were prostrating and the sudden moon popcorn. Yes, and then how did that become true? Excellent. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair. That's, that's true. So that was, uh, and then his, uh, that was his dream, which is at the beginning of the surah. And towards the end of the surah, we, we know from the story and uh, from the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that that's what happened. Now the question is, he was the uh, Aziz and then they prostrated for him. Can we prostrate now for our Aziz? No, that's actually um, after, in, during the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa all this stuff was, um, we can't do that. We can't actually prostrate to anybody except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But previously it was allowed. So that was previously. We don't take that and go and prostrate to someone else because in Islam it's not allowed. Very good. Now we go to some tricky question. The masjid that was built, we need to give you some. You got some? some? Good. The, the masjid that was built and is mentioned in the Quran that was built by the Munafiqeen. Yes? What was the name of that masjid? No. Yeah? That's right. Yeah, that's right. So subhanAllah, why I've chosen this question as well. You can actually, this, this it's really important for us to take notice of things like this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when somebody does something, it's not the action that you do, it's what drives your heart and that's your intention is with that action so you may do the best thing but if your intention is not right look Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran these people have built masjids masjid is a house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but you can see the intention behind it so it's very important for us to the actions that we do that it has to have the right intention even though the deed that we may be doing we look at it in our eyes that it's a, a big deed a great deed but the intention, if it's not right, it would destroy it. So it's very important for us um, to purify our intention. 
Now I'm going to do one more question and then I'm going to give Sheikh Yusuf to give uh, maybe one question to you guys as well. Zamzam. Oh, Sheikh Yusuf. Jazakallah khair. Now, my final question. Which prophet was swollen by the whale? And this is an easy one. Yes, yes, yes. Ah, uh, uh, no, 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 only him, only him, only him, only him. Prophet Yunus. Ahsan, good, Yunus, that's good. Well, it's good that they all know, which is good, which is really good. Now, did you learn this at Garden College? Yes. Alhamdulillah, that's good. Barakallah bihik, Shaykh Yusuf. All right, so the final question, we're going to give that to Shaykh Yusuf. Month of Ramadan is month of forgiveness. But Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned two conditions for get that forgiveness. Who can say that? Alright, who knows that? Yes. The person who has basically uh, who who drink alcohol and the second person who basically is disobedient to his parents. And the third person basically <coughs> has kina in his heart for a brother does not deserve does not basically receive the forgiveness of the Ramadan. Rest all are basically eligible. Shaykh Yusuf. Shaykh Yusuf. Actually, here's a hadith. Now, okay. was he right or wrong? He's fifty-fifty. Uh, <laughs> 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 we give him half of them. <laughs> You want to tell them or yeah. <laughs> who, who knows? Is there the hadith? Yes. So, does anyone know the hadith? We give you guys an opportunity. Do you want to maybe repeat the question? I don't think many people. Yes? Oh, no. All right. Very good. So, that's the hadith. Man saama Ramadan iman wa ihtisaban, ghufira lahum ma taqaddam min dambi. That's very good. Jazakallah khair. Um, what, what, what That's very hard. Sheikh Yusuf, you can Sheikh translate Yusuf. English. Iman and Wahtisaban. Whoever fasts in the month of Ramadan, with two, two conditions. First one is by believing in Allah, believing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared for them in paradise. And the second one is uh, expecting his reward. And then he or she may get the forgiveness from Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. Barakallah um, Khair. On behalf of the um, rest of South Australia, the Muslims in South Australia, I really want to say Jazakumullah Khair for putting all, especially the guys that are here from the, the masjid and for the school. Because I know every time we come here, uh, we really enjoy here because we feel like there is a big family here and that's what we want to see as a community it needs to be a big family here. And when we come here for iftar or for taraweeh, we really get to see that. So I want to say Jazakum khair for everyone that contributes into this. And we hope that this community gets bigger and bigger. And we know there's lots of people coming and moving this way, which is really good. And that's kind of encouraging because if you have a masjid like this near you, and if you have a school like this near you, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? So it's a big blessing. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to bless you all and to make this Ramadan a blessed Ramadan for every one of you and to protect you and protect your family. And Jazakum Allah khair and inshallah we see more of you. May Allah reward you all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I remember two years ago when we came here, we found nothing but a masjid here, a new masjid in the northern suburb. But coming back two years later, alhamdulillah, we're seeing more and more improvement at this place. Last year we had the, the, alhamdulillah, the blessing that we had Garden College started. And this year is their second year and it's getting bigger and bigger. And not just that, the community is getting bigger and is enlightening us when we come here. Because every time we come here, we hear the joy of the kids. We hear the beautiful, blessed Quran recited in this place. It goes on and on. I'm here today with Brother Fuad to tell us a little bit more about the improvement and how this place is progressing. Assalamu alaikum, Brother Fuad. Wa alaikum as -salam. How are you? Alhamdulillah. How are you? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. As you can see, what's happening around here in a blessed month and the community, as you just said, is getting bigger day by day. Alhamdulillah, which is a blessing for, not, for us, for everyone. 
but for our kids mainly, for our next generations to see some institute like this, which is on its own steps and you know, uh, providing them this good um, services, which is very much needed in these days. You are right, exactly right. So, I mean, having, having a masjid next to a school is definitely a two positive things working back to back. When we came here two years ago, we found nothing but a small masjid here. But for some reason, we kind of had a feeling, we could feel the environment, we can feel the vibe here, that this was going to be a very homely style masjid. And now, alhamdulillah, for the second year of the school, how is that progressing? Um, the main reason behind that, the main driving force behind that is to bring the community closer. And in order to bring the community closer, you need to talk to them. And you, when you talk to them, you need to open your doors. And this is what this place is doing. It, it has opened doors to everyone. Not only to Muslims, to our uh, non-Muslim uh, neighbors as well. They're always welcome here. They do and come uh, do iftar with us. They break bread with us here. So this is the main driving force. And this is the progress of all blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the hard work and efforts which the community itself has put together. And now you can see this institute building and inshallah it will be growing uh, in the future as well. And now we have heard that, you know, lots of people are moving around just because of the masjid and the school together. And as you can see, all these activities happening. So Alhamdulillah, it's getting better. But as I said, driving force is the communication, better communication and to be on the right path. Zakala khair. And, and it is, it is. It's, it's a two-way conversation. You, you have a, a, a people here that driving this, this, this place here who listens to people, who listens to the community. And you have a very supportive community that comes and interacts with the people here, which is great. Now, tell me about Ramadan in particular. What is happening here? I know that you've got lots of newcomers, a lot of uh, new arrivals, especially from Syria, Burma. The Rohingya people are arriving here and the Syrian people are um, arriving here and most of them live around here. What do you have this Ramadan in particular about iftars? Um, as per last year, we also are offering you know, the um, iftars on daily basis. This is one of the main reasons why we expect or we really want everyone to come and join us. And this is what every, uh, bringing a loss together. Not only the people which you have just mentioned, but we see students from uh, there's nearby university here, UniSI campus in Mosul Lakes. So the students come from there as well and lots of people. So as I said, like you need to give some incentive in order to attract the uh, community. So the biggest incentive is the community putting all the efforts and the blessings together in the form of iftar. And lots of people come and enjoy the iftar here. They talk to each other, discuss their problems with each other. And this is what, you know, as I said earlier, this is something which we as a community should be doing all together. Not only to the Muslims, but we should take care of our non-Muslim brothers as well. Of course. So that's, you, meant, you mentioned something really important. Um, I've, I've mentioned the previous as well. Food and soccer brings people together yes. and uh, and when you come here you find both as we're speaking right now the kids had their food and now they're playing soccer yep. so you've got both how can they not come here exactly. it's ramadan you've exactly. got food and you've got soccer so yes. which is great beautiful work that you guys are doing and especially if you haven't been here during ramadan during iftar what i'll tell you right now from here you're missing out because really you're missing out on a very family orientated place Last time when I came here, I've seen families bring their food from home and coming here to eat it here so they can be with everyone else. They brought their own food as well, yes. just so they can be here with everyone else. Because you see kids are playing, you've got playground, you've got grass area, you've got eating area, and you've got marquees, beautiful marquees like this when you're all closed in with heater. How can you say no to a place like this? If you haven't seen it, you need to come down to Garden College or Garden Masjid for iftar and really while you're here have a look at the school and have a look at the community because I'm sure you are really going to enjoy it. Brother Fuad, Jazakallah Khair, it's Thank been a you. pleasure meeting you again, seeing you again Wait. and being here again yes. and inshallah we'll see you again very soon. Jazakallah Khair. You're always welcome and everyone is welcome here. Jazakallah Khair, we'll see you again and inshallah soon at another masjid near you.